Start with the first one. Well, originally it was Abel. God accepted Abel's uh, offering and not Cain's. But he was killed, so Seth became the son of promise. And then from there we have um, uh, Abraham was the younger son of... Uh, Oh, I'm sorry. We, uh, after that, we have Japheth is older than Shem. Shem is the younger brother of Japheth. And then we have Abraham being the younger son or younger brother of uh, what was his name, Nahor. And so this is happening again and again and again in the Bible. And it will continue to go on dozens and dozens of times in the Bible where the second is replacing the first, even before they were born. Okay? This is God's divine election being announced even before they were born. All right? Um, the older shall serve the younger. So when her days were fulfilled for her to give birth, indeed there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red. He was like a hairy garment all over, so they named his name Esau. Esau means hairy. He was like a red garment, and so they, but he has another name. What is his other name that he's given in the Bible? Esau is Edom. Edom, which means red. So he's red and he's hairy, okay? And also because he wanted the red lentil soup, right? Okay, so um, afterward his brother came out and he took hold of Esau's heel. So his name was called Yaakov. What does Jacob mean? He grabs the heel, which is an idiom. Okay, not an idiot, it's an idiom. An idiom is something that means something else. To grasp the heel means a deceiver. A person who grasps the heel is a deceiver. So he's, he, it, it's an idiom. He, he's both of them. Okay, and we're going to see that. He deceived his brother, he deceived his father, and then he ends up being deceived himself. So their names are being given to them. He grasped the heel, but the Lord knew that he would be born that way and that all, his whole life would be a pattern of what he was named. Okay, so... Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. Now, the reason why, if you'll see that, I highlighted it in orange or pink here. Anytime somebody in the line of Jesus is mentioned, I went through and I highlighted how old they were when certain things happened in there. And that, if you go through that account, and I've got it on my website, it will show you. Remember we talked about how um, God said to Abraham, you, your descendants will be 400 years oppressed by a nation and they will be you know, in a, a land not their own and all that. How long were they actually in Egypt? It was about 200 years, not 400 years. The entire time from the promise made to Abraham until the time of the covenant was 430 years. That's explained in the New Testament. But people still, because the Old Testament says it'll be 400 years, you're in a foreign land, they say it must be Egypt when the foreign land is anywhere they live because as it said about uh, Abraham, he's a dweller in a foreign land. He's a pilgrim and an alien, okay? So the fact that it says that, I went through here and I've got all of their years of life and all of the times that certain things happened and I documented it all out and it's quite apparent that it is much, much less than 400 years that they were in Egypt. Now the uh, Septuagint, I believe, says that it was uh, uh, 200 and... Oh, the Septuagint says in Egypt and the land of Canaan. And then Josephus is the one, I believe, that said that it was 215 years in Egypt, 215 years in the land of Canaan. Anyway, it certainly is not 400 years in Egypt. So don't let people uh, get you off on that tangent. All right, so, so the boys grew and Esau was a skillful, skillful hunter and a man of the field. But Jacob was a mild man. Dwelling in tents. Okay, now the word mild actually is from a Hebrew word that means complete. He's a complete man. Whatever that means. Maybe it means, you know, whatever. But uh, he's a mild man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau. Okay, so we have favoritism already, but, and, which is going to bear on what happens later. Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game. Isaac loved his good food. But Rebekah loved Jacob. All right, now somebody else has got to start reading. We'll finish up chapter 29 and then I'm 25 and then we'll be done. So somebody read 29 on. Once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country famished. He said to Jacob, quick, let me have some of that red stew. I'm famished. And that is why he is called uh, Edom. Edom, which means red. red. So he's red. He likes red stew. Hey, they, they, he, they're seeing a pattern in the guy's life, so they're just going to call him Red. Uh, hey, Red. <laughs> hey, Red. Go ahead. Jacob replied, first, sell me your birthright. Look, I'm about to die, Esau said. What good is a birthright to me? But Jacob said, swear to me first, 
So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Mm. Didn't and go under Jacob, the thigh. Oh, yeah. The what? Right. He didn't go under the thigh. Oh, no, no. He just, he just, he made a promise and that was it, you know. So, okay, so. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread, some lentil stew, and then he ate and drank. Then he got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. Okay, and there's plenty in the Bible about that. I think, um, uh, I know Hebrews talks about it. Let me see if I can find it real quickly, just because we got five minutes and I don't want to go, get into another chapter. But um, I'm in John. I went too far, people. James, Hebrews 12. Um, let's see here. Uh, looking unto Jesus. Uh, oh, and James speaks about him as well. He says, um, don't be uh, ungodly like um, Esau, who, is it James? Anyway, um, uh, verse 16 of Hebrews uh, 12, it says, Lest any be a fornicator or a profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. And Esau is mentioned again elsewhere in the Bible, and it's always in an unfavorable light. Um, as a matter of fact, in the book of Malachi, is it? It speaks, and then Paul quotes it in the New Testament, speaking, I think, in Romans. But let me go to uh, Malachi real quickly. And I think, real quickly, let me get back to Malachi, and I, I think that's where he's mentioned again. Uh, and Malachi is a real short book, so if anybody finds it and uh, gets, uh, sees Esau in there, let me know. But um, Esau I have loved, I am Jacob I have loved, and Esau I have hated. Let me see if I can find that real quickly. Um, let me see here. Where, if you see it in there, let me know. And I'm sure that it's in the book of Malachi. Um, let's see here. If you see the name Esau or the name Jacob, I may be completely wrong. But um, Oh yeah, right at the beginning of it. Malachi chapter 1, it says, I have loved you, says the Lord. Yet you say, in what way have you loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, says the Lord. Yet Jacob I have loved but Esau I have hated and laid waste his mountains and his heritage. Okay, And then Paul goes in, as I said, it's in the book of Romans, and it'll be in chapter 9 where he quotes that particular verse. And he's talking about divine election when he does this. So let me see if I can find this real quickly here. It says, um, Lord of Sabbath, uh, do, 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 do. Okay, he, it's up in, uh, starting with verse uh, 10, we'll say, and not only this, but when Rebecca also had conceived by one man, even our father Isaac, for the children not yet being born, nor having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand. Election. Not of works, but of him who calls, it was said to her, the older shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob I have loved, he's quoting Malachi, but Esau I have hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? Certainly not. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I, whomever I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. So then it is not of him who wills, nor of him who runs, but of God who shows the mercy. So what we're talking about here in Genesis today bears all the way out into the doctrine of divine election mentioned at the end of the New Testament and throughout the entire uh, end of the Old Testament and throughout the New Testament. And these people are being used as examples. That's why they're in there. They're used as examples for our benefit to understand the workings of God. These aren't just arbitrary little stories. And the first time you read it, that's what you think. You think this is just, oh, what a neat story. And it's like, But if you look at it as a part of what God is doing, why is this mentioned in the Bible? There's nothing arbitrary about it. It's all in there to tell us something important about why God is doing certain things and why we need to pay attention to those things. And as I said, some people will uh, uh, be ignorant and they're happy with it. They never grow in Jesus. And there's nothing wrong with that in and of itself. You won't lose your salvation. But as I said to somebody yesterday, ignorance may be bliss, but when you get to the throne of Christ, you have nothing to offer. And that's why we're in Bible study, is to learn and to be able to hand something back to Him. Okay? I have taken my time and I've devoted it to learning about you, to learning about why you've done these things in human history. And here is my offering back to you, this studying that I've done. So, anyway, my hat's off to everybody that comes to Bible study. Fantastic. Anyway, Heavenly Father, thank you very much for uh, your word. Thank you for these lessons which teach us... Uh, 
about you, about uh, our own selves, about morality, about how we should act and uh, treat others, and so many other things that your Bible proclaims. It's a wonderful book. It's full of marvelous majesty, and we thank you for it. And uh, please uh, bless us as we go out in our different directions that uh, we can all come back here safely again next time. And uh, just may you be praised for every good thing that you do for us each and every day. And we love you. And we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.